Hi, my name is Samantha Sands, and I work with the Denver Metro Regional Science and Engineering Fair. In this video, we will provide some tips and tricks for creating your digital poster. Usually, at the science fair in person, you would create a trifold display board for your poster display, like the one you see on the screen now. However, in our virtual fair environment, our posters will need to look a little bit different. In this video, we're going to focus on creating your digital poster. If you still want to make a trifold display board, you can do that, but you will need to take close, clear pictures of each section of your board and upload them to follow the format of our digital poster. For this video, we're going to use the template for a science project presentation and use our turtle project from previous videos as an example project. The final presentation PDF can be no more than 12 pages. There are seven pages in the template document, and you can add up to five more pages of additional information. So let's take a look at each page of the template, and then we can discuss some best practices for creating a presentation. Our first page of the science project presentation is our title page. Your title page should have your project title, your name, and your project ID number. You may also want to include a single eye-catching image of your experiment or project. Even though the digital poster is different than your trifold display would be at the in-person fair, you still want your digital poster presentation to be visually appealing to your audience. The second page is your project introduction. Use this page to answer the question, what is your research question? Explain what is known or has already been done in your research area. Be sure to include a brief review of relevant literature. If this is a continuation project, a brief summary of your prior research is appropriate here. Be sure to distinguish your previous work from this year's project. And don't forget to include a description of your purpose, your research question, and your hypothesis. The third page is your method section. Explain your methodology and procedures for carrying out your project in detail. What did you do? What data did you collect and how did you collect that data? Discuss your control group and the variables you tested. You do not need to include a list of materials. The fourth page is your results section. What were the results of your project? Be sure to include tables and figures which illustrate your data. Also, include relevant statistical analysis of your data. The fifth page is your discussion section. What is your interpretation of your results? What do these results mean? Compare your results with theories, published data, commonly held beliefs, and expected results. How did the data vary between repeated observations of similar events? Don't forget to discuss possible errors in your project or data. These errors will not be seen as flaws, but rather a natural part of doing science. We learn from our errors, mistakes, and unexpected results. The judges will appreciate that you are proactive in sharing this information. The sixth page is your conclusion section. Be sure to answer the following questions. What conclusions did you reach? What do these results mean in the context of the literature review and other work being done in your research area? How do the results address your research question? Do your results support your hypothesis? And what applications do you see for your work? The last required page is your references section. This section should not exceed one page. If your list is more than one page, limit your list to the most important references. List the references and documentation that you used that were not of your own work, such as books, journals, articles, and websites. Hyperlinks to original source material are the only permissible links allowed within the presentation. In this template, you have up to five additional pages that you can include. These pages may include additional information about your project, additional images of your project, and anything that you think will help explain your project to the judges while still adhering to all display and safety rules. A complete list of display and safety rules can be found on our website under the Forms and Rules tab in the ISIF Rules document. The most important display and safety rules to keep in mind when creating your digital poster are that all photographs and images must have a credit line, properly citing the source, even if it is a photo that you took. This includes clip art and stock photos that you may use from PowerPoint, Google Slides, Canva, or other graphic design documents. 
Most stock photos contain a photo credit source, but if they do not, you can list the program as the source of the image, like you see here on the image on the top of your screen. Remember, do not include any personal information, such as an email, social media account, QR code, and hyperlinks to other websites. The only personal information allowed on your display is your name and project title. And do not use any corporate or commercial logos in your display. Now that we have gone through the requirements of your digital poster presentation, let's go over a few tips and tricks that will assist in creating your display. Be as clear and concise as possible. Use bullet points or numbered lists instead of long paragraphs. Make your titles the largest font size on your page, followed by your headings and then your text, so that your information is tiered and judges can easily find the information they may be looking for. We recommend using a white or light colored background with black or dark text. This will be the easiest format for your audience to read on a computer screen. If you do choose to add color to your poster, be aware of common color deficiencies and account for appropriate contrast. Images and graphics should support your content, not distract from it. It is tempting to fill up your poster, but white space is your friend. Do make sure to include some images and color to make your poster visually appealing to an audience. A well-designed, memorable poster will also help you stand out from other projects. And lastly, have a few people, such as your parents, adult sponsors, teachers, or friends, review your digital poster before submitting it. Ask them to double check for any spelling errors or mistakes, and ask them to provide critical feedback about your display, including how easy was it to read? Were they able to quickly and easily find information about your project? What questions do they have after viewing your display? And is there additional information you could add to help answer these questions? Receiving this critical feedback and review from your peers and mentors before submitting your presentation will ensure that you're putting your best display before the judges. You'll be surprised how many edits you will find when someone else looks at your work. And receiving peer feedback is a critical part of the process of doing science. A full materials guide is available on our website that contains all of the information we presented in this video, as well as information about the additional materials you can submit for your project. There are also many other resources on our website that will help you design your digital poster presentation, including PowerPoint and Google Slides templates, and a helpful guide to poster design from the Auraria Library. Thank you for watching! Stay tuned for our next video, which will help you create your project video. For more information about the Science Fair, visit our website or email us at denversciencefair at ucdenver.edu.